Hey guys, welcome back to our Ottawa Senators rebuild. We are in to year two, about to get underway. Where we left off, just take a look here. We finished the draft, free agency, able to pick up some pretty big pieces in free agency, but our biggest acquisition obviously was Lafreniere. And I did put the notice down in the comment section of who should we play him at center or wing. And uh, it did come up that you guys, someone, well, regardless, one person did say play him at center to get the most amount of, uh, you know, use out of him. So at plus three, that's fine. We're going to put him in the first line with Kachuk and Bodker. Anisimov will probably look to trade this year as, uh, you know, I believe he is on an expiring deal. So, after that, we're looking on defense. I'll take a peek here. Shabbat, Gustafson, LaJoy, CC, Tanev, and DeMello. We need to get rid of one. I believe we have way too many righties. Hang on a second here. We have to get rid of... <clears throat> we're going to get rid of DeMello because we want... Zaitsev's there, but I do want Branstrom in the lineup. So, we're going to put Branstrom with Shabbat. A little bit too much offensive line there, but that's fine. And then in net, another big acquisition for us. We got Robin Lehner. So our team's looking pretty good. Um, the rebuild went a lot faster than I anticipated. Well, because, um, you know, of these uh, of the ability um, for the guys that we picked up in free agency. So I just want to make sure Bodker, Lafreniere. Wow, this is a weird lineup. I just want Lafreniere. And I also want to uh, put Batherson down here. And we'll put Branstrom there <clears throat> as we want him to grow as much as possible. So we're ready to go into the season um, and see what we can do. Just looking at uh, one last thing, if there's anyone we want to put on the trade block. It, it would be Anisimov. DeMello, five years left at 4.7. We did just resign him. So, um... Shabbat, Anisimov, he does have two years left, I believe, yep. So Anisimov at 85 overall, he should fetch his pretty big return. Again, this season now, um, you know, after making, or barely missing out on the playoffs last year, which I thought was crazy considering, um, you know, how bad the team was. Um, should be an improvement, obviously we improved quite a bit. I'm just looking to see if there's anyone else I wouldn't mind getting rid of. But they're all, our team's all pretty young after Anisimov, um, as we didn't really sign much. Then we're in the two-year deals left over, so that's fine. Um, I don't really want to move to Mello, but Andrew Powell will find. Uh, Wants, we'll do. And current picks we want, obviously we want it first. And future picks. First, turn the fourth off, and we'll change the age down. Actually, we can get rid of these guys. Picks is fine, <clears throat> and we can always adjust trades, that being said. So let's go ahead and uh, get into the season here. Obviously, um, our expectation would be uh, make the playoffs. I'd be pretty disappointed if we didn't, but we did get some draft picks late into the season. So we'll go month by month here. And get through this season as we start off. We'll do accept your, oh yeah, we do have a uh, coaching offers here. Rice and I did sign a lot of scouts as well, so that's all this is. Don't have fog of war on, so uh, that's why we can sign a lot of them. So. Yeah, I don't care. We lost our home opener. Not a good start. Lose to the Capitals. Do get our win back. 1-1-1. One, one, one. Fall to the Panthers. Fall to the Jets. Uh, let's take a look at the draft class real quick. Clark, Othman. The only elite highs that are there. Not bad as well. So, Hopefully we're not drafting there, but we'll see. As we're now back on a little bit of a win streak, three game win streak, four games. Can we get it to five? We do. As third and Pinto. Let's take a look at Pinto real quick. Why do they want him so bad? Top six low. He does have a lot of points for the Steelers. Shooting categories, meh. 
skating speeds in 84 19 88 like they won a second round pick in 22 for a third and pinto Yeah, I'll take that. That's fine. He's too far away from development. Another win there. As we do end the month, 7-3-1. and one. That's definitely um, acceptable. Lafreniere leading the team in points with 9. We're second in the division. Let's take a look at our team points here real quick. Just to see and make sure everyone's going well. Lafreniere with 9. White with 7. Shabbat with 7. Anisimov. Kachuk kind of struggling with 6 only. That's not bad at all. Brandstrom has three and seven. It's good to see Lafreniere doing so well. I mean, we could leave him on the wing, but let's go ahead and do a two-month sim here. And see how we do. Do we want Belmar? No, we do not. Lose big to the Leafs. That kind of sucks. Sandwiched with a win and another loss. Lose again. This month not starting nearly as good, but we do beat the Kings. Thank God. Very happy you kept the comment. Given the circumstances, I think we should send Lafreniere down. Based on my valuation, I think you should keep Lafreniere with the big club. Excellent. I agree with your call. Let's go with that decision. I'm glad you see it my way. Perfect. Yeah, that would be a very dumb decision. Lafreniere is doing great. So... Let's keep going here. A couple more wins. 10-6 and 1-4 in the division right now. Losing big to the Oilers and then the Ducks. It's going to be a good year for rookies. That's good. A couple more wins here. As long as we are in a playoff spot by January 1st, I'm okay with it. 13-8-2. Definitely improving. 14. Two more games left in November. Lose that one, but win the last one in a shootout, and then one nothing shutout over the Lightning. Another 3-1 win over the Lightning. Looking pretty good right now at fourth in the division. Again, our shutout back-to-back -back losses here. We'll keep going through another overtime win. Brady Kachuk, I'm sorry about how I'm playing out there. Brady Kachuk struggling. Let's see what we can help with. Thought about it. I think I need better chemistry with my line eights or receive more ice time. I can help with that considering you are the future with Lafreniere. So let's get him what he wants. Big win there. 19, 11, and 2. Team is doing great. Lafreniere is having a great rookie season, though. At 27 points in 32 games. So let's take a look at the points. Whereas Kachuk is struggling, considering he did so well last year. He's got 19 points in 32 games, only 8 goals. Shabbat, 18 and 32. What else we got down here? See, Branson's doing good. We just got to make sure he stays in the lineup. Let's take a look and edit the roster a little bit as far as the lines go. See if we can get Kachuk what he wants here. I mean, putting Lafreniere up at center does give him a plus 3, so that is what he wants. So you move White here, Batherson to the third line. Can we get any more chemistry anywhere else? Logan Brown over Connor Brown. Hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but okay. As Norris is definitely going to be a sit. What's Batherson? Only 70 on the draw. Uh, with Nemesnikov. Actually, we'll leave him up there. That's fine. Okay, and on defense, we are going to have to move DeMello. So we'll put Tanev there. We'll put DeMello in, and we're going to put in Brandstrom here. No point in having Brandstrom up with the big club. He's not going to play regularly. And we'll even put Brandstrom up on his offhand on the first unit. Let's see. Gustafson gets that plus one down all the way down here. Special teams, we'll do power play. Kachuk is there, and we will put Brandstrom on the power play. As well as, let's CC off here. We're going to put, 
Let's put Bodker there. And then in nets, Robin Lehner, 86 overall, 922 save percentage, whereas Nielsen is looking pretty rough. So that's all right. And now we were able to get him better chemistry, so let's see what happens. Ottawa versus Buffalo. Let's go ahead and sim this month with the new roster cha line changes and see what happens. Finish off the rest of the month as Brady Kachuk is very happy we kept his promise. Perfect. That should raise his morale. Of course, it has no change. All right, here we are. Another shootout loss, unfortunately. A couple another loss with Dallas. We beat Calgary. Beat LA. 21-12-3. We are third in the division, but way back at the Leafs. The Leafs are 29-6-3. Just absolutely, although we do just beat them, absolutely running away with things here. Unless they slip up, we're in some trouble as far as winning the division goes. Although, that's not really any, you know, anything to worry about. As Lafreniere at 35 points in 39 games is exactly what we needed and why we traded up to get him. So Kachuk now is only is 28 points in 39 games, so that's good. And if we go down, where was Branstrom has 8 points in 18 games, which isn't terrible, but you want to see a little bit better than that. Um, all right, we'll go through the next month into the trade deadline. How is the AHL doing after winning the Calder Cup? We're 2010 and 4. I'm happy about that. Winning the AHL trophy or AHL championship in year one. So let's go all the way to February 1st and see what we can do. Um, my goal for this year, like I said, is we're just going to have to keep improving. Um, I don't think that we're a contender at all. Um, making the playoffs would be cool, but this is more of a progression for uh, Kachuk, Brandstrom, Shabbat, and Lafreniere. Um, going forward as we got a new trade here, Antropov, a second and a third in 2021. It's a second next year. Antropov, let's take a look at Antropov. 64 overall, not a lot of points. He's a left winger, and he's a low top six. Drafted in the third round by us this year. Hmm. I mean, we could get two picks, but I'm not really all that thrilled about that. We're going to change our uh, our um, trade block as well to see if we can't get any more players. As we get shut out by the Devils. Still third in the division, but um, things are uh, getting a little tight now. As we hit Logan Brown, was injured. We'll replace him automatically. As he is on a shootout win. Second in the division ahead of the Bruins. And we'll put Logan Brown back in. Sightsev is the one that he replaced it with. Perfect. We put him back in. And JT Brown also there. Connor Brown. And on defense. He does have 12 points in 29 games. 32 points. I'm thinking we should probably break this up, though. Hmm. What about Net? How's Laner doing? 914 save percentage. I'm fine with that. He's doing well enough. And... So we win our last game, a shutout, and on top of that. So now let's take a look at what we've got and what we can move as we push towards the end of the season. As Lafreniere has slowed down just a little bit. 43 points in 51 games. Colin White right behind him with 42. That's good as well. Kachuk's up to 37 and 51. So he has definitely improved since um, you know putting Lafreniere on that first line. Anisimov at 37. Bodker at 34. Shabbat with 32 and 51. I wish he had a little bit more than that. A couple other rookies that we've got here. Actually, we can just sort by rookie. As we've got quite a few. So, uh, Josh Norris playing on our fourth line. 22 points in 51 games. I'm thrilled about that. 13 points in 30 for Brandstrom now. I'm great with that as well, as he is only a 79 overall medium elite top six defender. Um, point per game or half point per game. I'm okay with Philip uh, Schlappick as well. 47 and eight points. He's really not doing well. So let's take a look at the rest of the league real quick, and we'll see how everyone's doing. Lafreniere obviously leading the league in points, so he's got a chance at the Calder for sure. Um, any other Jordan Kyrou's up there, but not. It's a big drop off after Zadina. 
If we look at all skaters, McKinnon is just cruising. 75 points with Rico Ranson. The entire that entire line is just blowing things up. Where Clayton Keller's got 67, McDavid right behind him, but in goal, it's in goals, it's nuts here. Like that's that's wild. So among defensemen, I'm assuming it's Burns and Carlson. Yeah, it's Carlson again. That's nothing's really changed there. As um, you know, Shabbat's pretty far back. Uh, that's not bad at all. So, but that's okay because let's look a look, take a look at our team stats. Where again, we're still building. We're second in the division, so that's fantastic. Our entire so the entire league here, we are sixth in the league. As far as goals for, we are near the bottom, though, I believe. Oh, no, we're middle of the pack. That's fine. Uh, middle of the pack, yeah. Goals against. Um, we are sitting not actually in the bottom 10. That's pretty good. We're top 10 in goals against, so that's that's good. Our power play is operating at 20%, which is, again, middle of the pack, so nothing crazy there. We don't really need to. It's 76 on the PK, though. Did I read that wrong? What is our PK? Oh, no, our PK is doing fine as well. So, yeah, things are looking pretty well. We are pretty even across the board, and I can't really complain when you consider, um, you know, what we're looking at as far as how our team is and what, what the stage in the rebuild is going. All right, so here we are. Let's take a peek. We've got about th three or four weeks before the deadline. We're going to sim up to the deadline and see where we're at. And then we're going to uh, see what you guys think we should do as far as improving the squad up to that point. But let's take a peek and see how we end up doing as Browns for hurt again. Trade alert. Ryan Murray for Pelche. Zav Gorodny. It's a pick. Nothing really big there. We get another win against two wins in a row. Antropov and a fourth for two-thirds. We're going to update that after. So we'll continue that Logan Brown. We'll just see. So we got three, four straight wins in a row. Lose to Boston. Again, we're third in the division. That, lo that loss to Boston did put them in front of us. As two first go to Florida for Yandel and Petrovic. Not going to lie. Decent return for the Panthers. As Vancouver goes all in. Lose in overtime. Artem Anisimov is now injured. And let's go ahead and hit the line. It says, for whatever reason, we need to call someone up because Zaitsev is not who we want in the lineup. But we've got three guys here. We'll go like this. Brown shoots left. We need to get rid of Zaitsev. So we are going to bring a forward up. As fun as it is to have Zaitsev on forward, that's just not going to do it. As roster moves, who in the AHL can we call up? Abramov, who's been doing pretty good. Vitaly Abramov, 22 years old, 78 overall. Having a decent season. Dimitro Timoshev, also doing pretty well. We'll call up Abramov. Actually, is he a two-way? Yeah, two-way deal. And in the NHL, we're going to send down a forward or a defenseman. As we've got way too many in the lineup. Uh, we will send down... Joy's the only one. Now, we could send down Zaitsev and see if he gets claimed. Because that 5.25 million... And he's just not doing well at all. We have enough right-handed defensemen... Let's see if anyone claims him. Yes, Vancouver claimed him. That's actually great for us. Um, as we now shed $5 million in cap space, that was brutal cap hit. And we can put Abramov in the lineup. And that keeps everything okay. Make sure that it's not any better anywhere else. Nope. So Lafreniere also up to an 84. So quickly as we get to see that. Josh Norris is up to a um, an 81. Shalapik's at 80. Let's look on defense now. As Branstrom is an 80 overall. Only 16 points though. 
as we've got too many lefties, but that's okay. And then in net, still doing well with laner. Uh, we will do... Let's take a look here. Emil Poirier can fill in there. That's fine. Mikhaev. Baptiste. Yeah, there's no one else that we really want or that really matters. Valiev. Perfect. Open value of here as well. Perfect. All right. And the AHL team is doing all right as we're fourth in the division as well. That's not terrible. And we'll keep going here to the end of the or to the trade deadline. And we'll see where our team's at and what we're going to have to do to improve it. As our Tim and Nisa mom's available, we're just going to continue on though. Logan Brown literally cannot stay healthy as Anissa Mob is going to. There's another win against the Bruins as we are trailing them by a few points. A couple big wins. Red Wings fire their coach. Okay. And we lose two. All right. So we are at the deadline. And let's take a look where we're at and what this team needs. And then we'll go from there and see what we should do at the deadline. So, taking a look at things again, we've got Lafreniere, 54 points, leading the team in points. Uh, also, one back in goals. Brady Kachuk now up to 51 points, which was great because he was struggling quite a bit, but it does look like he's picked it up. Mikel Bodker, our first liner, another one doing 48 points in 63 games. Colin White with 47. Shabbat's up to 37 in 63 games, so it looks like he's for sure going to have another 50-point season, which I am thrilled about. <clears throat> As he is signed for quite a while, which is good. Uh, Nemesnikov, okay. Josh Norris, another rookie, 27 points. Um, Brandstrom, 40 games in, 16 points. So he is struggling quite a bit. We might have to take him off that first line with Shabbat as he's just not performing. And in net, let's take a peek here. 913 save percentage, although Nielsen's stepping it up quite a bit with 921. So our goaltender is doing pretty well. Um, now let's take a look at the entire league and see how the rest is doing. I'm assuming Lafreniere is still leading the point. Yeah, Lafreniere taking the Calder for sure, as he's just kind of blowing away now among defensemen. I'm assuming Carlson's still winning. Yes, he is. Meanwhile, we've got, yeah, as Shabbat kind of falls out of it. All skaters, McKinnon, Rantanen, McDavid finally steps in, but Landis Cog, this line is wild. When you can say that all three of them are in it, so... And then let's look at the teams, the team stats, as we've got the, uh, let's see, Link Division, let's do the entire league first. We've we we've got the Leafs leading the way, but followed by the Flyers, Bruins, Penguins, Stars, and we are in eighth in the league at the deadline, which is good. In the Eastern Conference, we're fifth, but in our division, things are pretty tough. Um, again, we've got... Uh, the Bruins, we're still trailing them by three points, although we are a ways away from Buffalo, meaning that we're more than likely going to ensure we're playing Boston in the first round. I don't think we're catching the Leafs. They have struggled quite a bit. And uh, let's peek here. Yeah, so I can't really complain about it too much. Everything is going to... Uh, According to plan here, again, the the goal this year is to make the playoffs would be pretty sweet considering we're so close last year. And it looks like we're going to. Uh, and then the old, other was the progression of Lafreniere, Kachuk, Shabbat, and Brandstrom. And, uh, yeah, so when it comes to the trade block, we'll have to see. We want to move. Do we want to move? Any, here's the question, guys. So we've got a lot of picks, and we've got a Nisimov who's on an expiring deal. Do we move? go all in and because if we look at our draft picks we've got two first rounders our own in dallas's two seconds three thirds three fourths 
I mean, we've also got two seconds next year. We've got a ton of picks we can move. Should we move picks to go in and grab a rental or a potential piece that could be on the team for a little while? Or should we kind of, as our deadline move, not trade Amnisimov in a deal that could, again, acquire someone? If we look around the... Um, Brad will browse the trading block real quick, see if there's anyone on the trade block that we could go after. Silverberg, again, I want to keep it under 30. That would be, uh, you know, just kind of fits where we're at. Um, we look here as he wants to get a little bit of firsts. Aiden Hill. <clears throat> One here. Stall, we don't need that kind of player. They want to move Jonathan Taves. <laughs> I mean, let's go after Jonathan Taves. Uh, Gust of Nyquist, uh, big, that's a big salary for his overall. Wow, he fell. That's tough. You hate to see that. X Niagara Ice Dog. Hmm, they want to move him, eh? Potential top six on Jason Robertson. I would love to grab Jason Robertson just from a personal standpoint, as I love my Ice Dogs. I'm not really seeing anyone. I mean, they want to move Evan Bouchard as top four d we already have a lot of right-handed players though look at those point totals i mean we could grab this would be the kind of trade guys moving someone you know like anisimov and maybe a pick or two to get evan bouchard that would be something i would be okay with i really don't want to go after an aging player as um you know the team is so young obviously they want to move suitor <laughs> and Parise no one here Gallagher at 85 overall is not terrible Ilya Sorokin <sighs> nope nothing here I wonder what the Sharks are trying Ooh, another another ice dog great <laughs> Tomasino let's see Ratcliffe nope and Hamiluk they want to move first round picks and then we got Fabry but again I don't know. Sergachev. There's no way we'd be able to get him, I don't think. But that would be gigantic. Um, but he is on an expiring deal. He's going to need a gi huge contract. Rasmus Sandin, don't need. No one there. Vegas doesn't want to move anyone good. Halak, we could get bring in a backup, a more you know proven backup. But, but Nielsen's having such a good season that there's really no point in that. So, guys, the only ones I'm really looking at from the block is Bouchard. I really wouldn't mind, um, you know, but I'm going to leave that up to you guys. Should we trade our picks and Anisimov and go really all in grabbing a rental or someone that's going to be substantially better for this team for the next little while? Or should we hold tight, keep Anisimov as almost our deadline deal, um, and then see how the team goes again? This would be our first year with Lafreniere and making the playoffs. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. But let me know in the comments section down below, guys, what we should do. Should we go all in at the deadline or should we hold tight, go through this next draft and playoffs with what we've got and have a, see if we can't have a huge draft? Um, it does look like there is going to be quite a few prospects available in this draft. Is it, is it is a decent draft? And we could also acquire players at the draft with the picks that we do <clears throat> that we do have. Um, I just, the last thing I want to check is where is Dallas as the stars are in first in their division. So that pick is pretty tough. Those could be two late round picks that we've got as we are going to make the playoffs. It looks like as well as Dallas. So, and guys, let me know in the comment section down below what you think next episode, we will go through the deadline and all the way through our playoff run and see what, what happens um so again guys thank you for watching any uh, comments or anything that you think that we should do about the series let me know in the comment section down below quickly check before i leave the 32 18 and 5 for belleville so we're doing all right as far as the ahl goes as well but again guys thank you for watching i'm no sleeps 12 i'll see you guys next time